again, localization being in a position where we get to see all the parts come together first. We were some of the first to realize that, you know, Houston, we have a problem. Everyone was really, really proud of their parts. They're like, yes, we have this great battle system, you know, with stamina. And you had this story team, like, yes, we have this story. Oh, hey, we have these guild leaves and look at this grass, it's so beautiful. But once you put it together, it was kind of a mess. So um, in, in localization, we just got to the point where it kind of went from thinking, okay, this project's gonna be great to, uh oh, there might be some problems. Can we, get, can we fix them? Can we fix them? Okay, we can't fix them. Is there anything we can do? Uh, I don't know. There are no shortage of games that live under the Square Enix banner, but none as big as Final Fantasy. But with each new game comes the promise of a new story, a new myth. The fall and rise of Final Fantasy XIV happened in real time in front of millions of people around the world. Where once stood a game that threatened to sink the Final Fantasy brand forever, now stands the second most popular subscription MMO in the world. But we wanted to know about this story from an entirely new perspective, from inside the corporate machine that made it happen, that led to its terrible loss launch and ultimately its incredible rebirth. They realized immediately that it was something that couldn't be solved via patches. I think they still believe that, you know, if we patch it, it'll be fine. And it wasn't until Yoshisan came in and told them, this is not something that can be patched. If we want to fix this, we're going to have to take a drastic step. ちょうど東京に来た時に秋葉原をね時間を作ってゾンビのように店をこううろうろしてエバークエストってゲームないですかねエバークエストってないですかって<笑>